This is music. This is my comfort zone. This is me. So the garage gig is doing this cool thing where he's challenging other members of the VC and it seems that so far he's targeting mainly metalheads. Anyways, the stipulation is that you have to listen to an album that he picks for you. You have to listen to it for an entire week, twice a day. And in return, you pick an album that he has to listen to for a week, twice a day. And I think it's kind of a fun way to step out of your comfort zone and listen to music you would otherwise not even consider engaging with. And uh, I just think it's, it's, it's fun. So he challenged me and we ended up agreeing to make it a two-parter. So he gave me two albums to listen to and I gave him two albums to listen to. And the way I've done it is I've split it up. So I've spent this week listening to the first album Next week, I will listen to the second album. And I also decided to modify it a bit and I made it a working week. So I've listened to this album twice a week, Monday through Friday. I'll do the same thing with the second album. So let's just get down to business. The first album that he gave me uh, is an album called Trio by Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt and Emmylou Harris. And I gotta be honest, uh, when I read the titles of the albums, I just read Trio and I went, wait, what? The German minimalistic band from the early 80s? I love that stuff. Bring it on. And then I decided I should probably read the entire sentence. And it said, by Dolly Parton, Emmylou Harris and Linda Ronstadt. And I, I said, oh, Dolly Parton, she's a country singer. Emmylou Harris, never heard her, but I heard her name and I knew she was a country singer Linda Ronstadt never even heard about her but you know I figured oh it's gonna be country music and I kind of don't like country music I also I mean in general and I also don't know anything about country music uh, so disclaimer there will be a certain amount of me talking out of my ass when it comes to country music it's all based on pure ignorance but now you've been warned so when oh country music um i found out it was from 1987 so at least it's not like post achy breaky heart country music so i expected it to just be your kind of standard country music like i don't know sitting by the campfire eating me some beans after a day of herding cows shot some horse thieves yesterday extracted their gold teeth and then I sold their boots. Shooting horse thieves, shooting horse thieves, shooting horse thieves, and eating beans. Shooting horse thieves, shooting horse thieves, eating beans, and having a good time. That's not what I got either. What I got was soul crushing, sad, sorrowful music, songs of loss, loneliness lamentation betrayal breakups broken hearts um, uh, abandonment general misery basically death i mean so depressive i mean the, the lyrics are just super depressive the music is just melancholic and sad so i did not see that coming that was a surprise. Um, another surprise was how folky this album actually is. Um, now, um, the uh, p songs, some of them were, were kind of like, you know, traditional folk songs. Some of them were written by, uh, you know, uh, folk uh, singers and folk songwriters from the 50s and 60s. I think some even earlier than the 50s. Uh, and some like who were active in the 70s and the 80s so very folky now it's it's easy to forget if you're 
an ignoramus like me that doesn't know anything about country music um, that given that country music nowadays just seems to be another kind of pop music i'm sure an, a country aficionado would uh, correct me here and point to all the nuances on the scene and that they probably have like some traditionalist movement and a modern poppy movement and all that stuff but to a lay person like me uh, to whom country music has just become another kind of pop music it's easy to forget that country music originated as a kind of uh, folk music and that country music uh, along with uh, bluegrass and i would say the blues for certain and uh, jazz and you know other traditional types of music that that's part of of the uh, landscape of traditional music of north america i will say that the blues ha has had a much more of an impact on my life than country music has had um, but anyways uh it's also easy to forget that uh, the main, I think, uh, progenitor of country music is Celtic uh, folk music. Um, and I could actually recognize uh, quite a lot of elements from Irish folk music. I'm not an expert on Irish folk music either, um, but I did live in Northern Ireland for a while. And uh, we, you know we did go to pubs and there would be like the irish folk music jazz uh, jazz no jam sessions in the, the irish pubs and it would be on the radio and there would be like more formal performances downtown and on campus and things like that and i ended up taking a bit of an interest in irish folk music and I bought some cds while i was there and i subsequently bought some more cds so i've heard some uh, Irish folk music and I could recognize uh, a lot of elements from Irish folk music on the trio album you know some chord progressions some vocal melody phrasings some song structures and things like that so that was very interesting to me did not see that coming so it was uh, kind of full of surprises uh, this album um, shatter a lot of stereotypes and that's always healthy um, but you know the important question is do i even like it and the answer is yeah i actually kind of like some of it um so i don't dislike it i don't hate it or anything like that i i quite like some of it uh so uh one of the elements that i like is how folky it is you know the the uh I irish folk music elements that i could recognize um i really enjoyed that Another thing that I really like about this album is maybe not not a big surprise the singing we have three very very talented uh, great vocalists and on this album in my opinion we have one unique iconic uh, singing voice and then two fantastically beautiful voices so let's just get that out of the way yeah Dolly Parton she's the international icon she's the one that um, people know around the world um, like I, I know her I've heard some of her songs I've seen some of the movies she was in she's the international icon Emilou Harris knew her name Linda Ronstadt never heard of her right so yeah we, you have Dolly Parton uh, she has a unique singing voice there's only one Dolly Parton and there's nothing anyone can do about that but i will say that amy lou harris and linda ronstadt i much much prefer their voices their singing styles to dolly pardon i'm not saying that dolly pardon is garbage or anything that's not what i'm saying i'm not trashing her i'm just saying i like the two other singers better it appeals more to me they they come across more schooled uh, they seem to use their sort of technical proficiency as singers more. Uh, their voices are more powerful to me. Uh, but, you know, despite being more schooled and more technical, they still emote a lot. And there's a lot of attitude uh, to their singing whenever the song calls for it as well. So, and I think, I mean, as I said, I've never heard Amy Lou Harris. I've never heard Linda Ronstadt sing before, so I could be mistaking the two for one another but i think i think it's linda ronstadt that i 
like the best on this album. Um, I think she has the most uh, amazing voice, if it is her, um, and just sounds great and powerful. And But again, I'm not trashing Dolly Parton. But in the last song, Father Along, which is one of the uh, traditional songs, it starts out with um, Dolly Parton doing her thing, sounds good. And then, I th I'm not sure, either Linda Ronstadt or Emily Harris sort of takes over afterwards and just blows Dolly Parton completely out of the water. Much more powerful voice, a singing style that appeals to me much, much more. Uh, <clears throat> I also really like it when they sort of sing in vocal harmonies. The three voices go very, very well together. Uh, they do they do use that kind of, I don't know what it's called, I don't know what the actual harmonies are, <clears throat> but they do use that kind of, I guess, typical, um, typical country western vocal melodies, vocal harmony thing. Don't know what it's called, but I'm sure you can imagine what it is I'm, I'm talking about. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, the singing, fantastic, um, and I like how folky it is. Um, so, okay, so um, some of the things that, I, I mean, I don't hate them. They're not things I dislike. They're just like small, I guess, gripes I have. <clears throat> First of all, I think some of the imagery in the lyrics, some of the figurative language, uh, you know, metaphors, similes, things like that. I think some of that is a bit cheesy, to be perfectly honest. Um, I don't remember which song it is. I think maybe it's Those Memories of You, but I, I, I'm not sure right now, uh, where they say something along the lines of uh, tears started falling like a tree shedding its leaves. I think that's a just a clunky um, simile. It doesn't work for me. The sort of the imagery, like a person and a tree, tears and leaves, I could have done a better. Uh, and um, there's one song called "Wildflower," which was penned by Dolly Parton, uh, which is actually, uh, I think, it's a pretty good song. I actually enjoy listening to that song. But I think the, the sort of the main metaphor. Uh, it's a song about you know. Uh, breaking from the mold, uh, self-realization, um, empowerment. So the metaphor is like it's a flower in a garden and all the flowers in the garden are identical, but this flower it wants to branch out. That's the flowers, except if it's like a bush or something, but they, they don't really have branches. So that's one thing. So it leaves the garden uh, it uproots itself, leaves the garden, becomes a wild mountain rose. Uh, but at the same time, the garden also allows it to leave. So what's going on there and flowers, can't they, they can't uproot. I mean, there are lots of kind of like small logical inconsistencies within that metaphor that just uh, kind of annoy me a bit. It's I know it's kind of like minor points. Uh, there's a song written by Phil Spector on here, and uh, I just, I mean, you, you, it's hard to avoid Phil Spector songs, right? But always a bit weird listening to a song that he wrote, you know, given the murder and alleged murder and all that stuff. So that, that's, that's a bit weird. Um, and there are also some kind of discrepancies. Now, most of the lyrics are just depressive. Uh, most of the music is just depressive, but the uh, wildflower song that I just mentioned, the lyrics are actually kind of, again, supposed to be about self-realization, empowerment, um, so kind of uplifting lyrics, but the music, depressive. So that's a bit of a strange discrepancy. Uh, those memories of you, which I think I also mentioned, um, the music here is actually a bit uplifting, but the lyrics depressive so that's another kind of weird discrepancy uh, so there's some minor things that I I mean I have some minor gripes with but the singing fantastic especially I think it is Linda Ronstadt wow what a voice she has a fantastic voice um, and I like the folky parts of it so uh, yeah um, 
if I were to highlight some songs, uh, I really like Hobo's Meditation. Um, there's, it's a bit of a cheesy song, but it's also, you know, there's some very good singing in it, I think. And um, the, the, uh, the music itself is quite folky. Um, I even think that there's a Danish folk singer who maybe took the maybe it's maybe they didn't rip off that song because i think it's a traditional kind of thing but they may, maybe was inspired by the same uh source uh, maybe they ripped off the song i don't know sped it up a bit um so so i could kind of recognize that but i like that song hobo's meditation um i uh, really really like uh telling me lies which is a I think a straight up pop song, but the singing is just out of this world. Fantastic singing. So that's a great, great, great song. Wow. Um, and I also quite like, you know, the Wildflower song, despite the discrepancies I mentioned and the kind of clunky uh, sort of main metaphor. Um, and um, Had Enough is another great song with some fantastic vocals in it. So yeah, I actually I actually quite like uh, this album. Uh, I don't think there's a bad song on it, but there are some that I enjoy more than others. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, fantastic. Emilou Harris, fantastic. I could be mixing those two up because, as I said, I'm I'm not very familiar with them as artists. So would I buy this album? Um, I'm not going to go out and actively look for it. And I also would not be willing to pay a pretty penny for it. But if I come across a cheap copy of it on CD, on vinyl, cassette tape maybe. If I come across a cheap copy of it in the wild, I will probably pick it up. It's not going to be an album I listen to very often. But it's going to be one of those albums that, um, you know, you just... Every now and then you go, ah, maybe I'm going to listen to side A or side B or a couple of songs from it. That, that yeah, I would pick it up if I found it at a reasonable price, but I'm not going to go out and actively hunt for it. So uh, those were my thoughts on Trio by Dolly Parton, Emilou Harris and Linda Ronstadt. Super depressive, soul-crushing album. Very folky, though and just fantastic singing. So uh, stay tuned next weekend. I'm going to be back with my thoughts on the other album that the Garage Geek gave me to listen to. Go and check out his channel. It's a great, it's a VC channel, but he it's more like, a, I think, a collector's channel, actually. He collects vinyls. Uh, he also collects Funko Pops and comic books and movies and things like that. So if, if you're kind of like into that, uh, I guess kind of like nerd geek um, collecting uh, universe do check out his channel great channel and fun videos as well so thanks for watching